Hi, welcome back to the channel. I've been filming a ton of different content lately because I have just been feeling really inspired about different hobbies and how I spend my time. I think the great thing about what we have in our little community here is that everyone obviously has very different interests and I do have a lot of interests and a lot of different areas of my life that I want to put time and energy into. So I love that you guys have been enjoying the reading content, the work content, the productivity content, and I'm super excited to share more of my hobbies and my interests with you through video content over like the next couple of months. I actually recently picked up a sewing machine, which you can see in the corner there. So I'm gonna be making some clothes. It's something that I enjoy doing in the past. And lately I've just been craving doing something with my hands and just making something. So that is a new project that I'm pursuing, which I'm very, very excited to show you. But anywho, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some tools that I have been absolutely loving for all of 2023 and that I think I will really continue to use probably more so in 2024. They're all productivity or wellness related. I think due to the nature of my nine to five as a marketing manager working in tech, I am constantly trying out new apps. As soon as something comes onto my radar, I download it, I test it, and it's just become sort of a habit for me which is great for work because I'm able to see a ton of different UI, a ton of different user bases, usages, and take inspiration for the projects that we have at work. But then personally, I'm also able to find apps that I can integrate into my own daily routine and things that I love using. So I wanna share with you some of my best finds in the last little while and apps and tools that I'm really, really excited to build into my habit of usage as well. Starting off with one that I believe I've talked about in the past, but it's Continuo. I used Continuo a lot for a period and then I sort of dropped off, but just with this new quarter starting and me setting some new goals for myself, I did pick back up using Continuo and it's something that I want to build back into the habit of using. But essentially, Continuo is a super minimal habit tracker. It shows your progress day after day in a really clean calendar format. And this app is probably one of the best habit tracking apps that I have used in terms of UI, in terms of ease of use. And then visually as well, it's been the most appealing to me. Using it to track habits is incredibly easy. All you have to do is click into today's date and then just swipe in the bar of the habits that you want to track. You can also add as many habits as you want and you color code them so that when you look at them in that calendar view, you're quickly able to see how you've been doing throughout a month. Not to mention the color coding does make the visual aspect very, very beautiful. It also gives you stats and analytics about your habits over time, which I really enjoy as well. And then it is really easy to change out habits, delete old habits and kind of set new habits that you want to build. I keep this app on the first page of my iPhone home screen so that I remember to use it every single day, but you can actually set a notification within the app as well. That'll just remind you at a specific time of day to just go over what you've done that day and put in your habit tracking. The second app is actually my most recent app discovery and it's already something that has been built into my daily habit. One thing that I'm trying to do, which I learned from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, is is habit stacking, but also just replacing certain habits with others. Lately, I've just been feeling really overwhelmed whenever I'm scrolling through TikTok, Instagram, or any other like social media platform. So whenever I get that urge to scroll on my phone, instead of clicking into Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, I put all those apps on the second page of my iPhone. And the things that live on my home screen on my iPhone are like reading apps, my habit tracker, my budget tracker, apps like swipe wipe swipe wipe is essentially an app that allows you to go through all the photos in your camera roll and clear any photos that you don't want to keep out which i think for most is a very very daunting task i think most people don't even think about going through their photos and trying to delete old photos but especially working in my field creating a ton of content there is 
so, so many videos and photos that I have no need for anymore and that just take up space on my phone. I really love Swipe Wipe because it just proves that form and function can exist together. They've essentially taken that swipe right for yes, swipe left for no sort of behavior that a lot of us are used to from dating apps and brought it into a camera roll cleaning application. They keep your photos organized into categories so it's by month and then there's also a today category that shows you your content from that day but also from this exact same date in past years so that you're constantly reviewing old content as well. They've built in this like streak counter which I think trains your brain to want to go back to the app but on a day to day I just click into one month's folder and go through all of the photos from that month so swipe right for yes swipe left for no and then once you've gone through all the photos it'll just confirm that yes you want to delete this many photos and once you've deleted those photos it'll even tell you how much memory space you've saved from getting rid of that media all in all from a app design standpoint i think that swipe wipe absolutely killed it because it tackled every little thing that is required from an app to really build a habit with a user. They have a streak counter, they have amazing organization and UI that makes it very, very easy to use and understand. So the barrier to entry for this app is incredibly low. They give you that little positive reinforcement at the end of you going through a month and just saying like, you did amazing, this is how much you saved, keep going. And I think that the people who created this app are just absolutely genius and I'll definitely be using it as an example for my work at Cashew. Anywho, that's me geeking out a little bit about the design of the app, but all in all, it is honestly the best app that I've used for clearing out media content from your phone and they've done it in such a way that actually makes the task fun. I've also talked about this app before, but it is Flow, which is a really, really easy to use Pomodoro timer type app. It is cross-platform, so you can use it on your mobile phone as well as on your laptop or desktop. What I like about it is the UI, again, is very, very simple. So you can kind of see a pattern of things that I enjoy, but even though the app is easy to use and is simple to understand, there are a lot of really great features that come with it as well. So you can tell it how many sessions you want to do before you have a break. So I have mine set to four 25 minute sessions and then I get a 10 minute break. You can quickly adjust the length of time of your timer as well as what you're actually doing and that will actually give you data on all the tasks that you've done over a certain period of time and how much time you actually spent on it. It is cross-platform as I mentioned so if you set a timer on your phone that same timer will show up on your desktop if you have the app open. As you can probably tell from my love for the swipe wipe app I do like to keep my devices really really clean like I really try to spend time to do a digital cleanse and actually get rid of any app Apps, any content, any files, any emails that I don't need. I've been looking for an email client that helps me do this for so freaking long because I have multiple email accounts and they're all for different purposes, like for different projects or for work or, you know, for content creation. And it feels like my inbox is constantly being bombarded with messages. The email client that I ended up falling in love with is Spark. It's so, so easy to use. There are a ton of keyboard shortcuts that make the actual usage very, very easy. The thing about keyboard shortcuts is, yes, it does make your tool so, so intuitive and easy to use, but sometimes that does give users a learning curve. Thankfully, they've used very similar keyboard shortcuts to like native Apple apps. So if you're somebody who is already very familiar to using keyboard shortcuts, it's gonna feel very, very natural to use the keyboard shortcuts within Spark. I also love that there's so many different ways to organize your emails. So you can prioritize an email, you can put an email aside, which brings it into this like little bubble at the bottom of the page so that you can look at it later. It'll automatically sort out your newsletter related emails, your social related emails, much like how Gmail does, but in a much more beautiful and efficient way. But the main sort of feature that really drew me to Spark is the done feature. And what that does is when you're looking at your emails in a list form, if you know right away that email doesn't need to be in your inbox for any reason and that you don't need to read it, you can hit the shortcut for done, which essentially removes that email from your inbox. Now, it doesn't delete it, so you can actually turn on the filter to show all of your done emails 
but it essentially looks at your email list as a to-do list and it's like checking off that specific task. Emails that I really want to keep track of, I prioritize and that brings it into a specific area of your inbox. But I like to keep certain emails that require action within my priorities list so that I always know that I can check back to it for info, for a contact, whatever it may be. This is the one email client that I've used that actually allows me to get my inbox to like inbox zero, which is is essentially having nothing in my inbox. Cron is another tool that I started using this year and it is a calendar client that allows you to bring in, you know, as many different calendar types as you want. I use this both for work as well as personal reasons and it does make it very easy to use again with like all the color coding, with the sorting that it allows you to do. This is another tool that depends heavily on the keyboard shortcuts, but I think for me personally, that is what I look for in tools like this are tools that make shortcuts very very easy to use and understand because I am constantly trying to find quicker ways to do things especially with my apps and software. I believe that Notion actually bought out Cron or I think the team at Notion created Cron. Either way they have this cool function where you can attach a Notion page right to a specific event. That personally for me matters a lot because I keep everything in Notion as you know so like meeting notes, information for projects, and having that attachment right on the event allows me to quickly access those notes or those pages that I need. Another amazing feature that I haven't seen many other calendar like clients do well is they have actually a built-in scheduling tool. In the past, in order to send out like your availability to a client, let's say, for them to schedule a meeting, you would have to use a separate scheduling tool like I think there's one called Schedule Once, there's Calendly, and that would require an entire separate subscription to that specific service. But Cron, you can actually quickly select availabilities in your calendar and send that out as a link and it displays it much like how Calendly displays it. So it gives you an area to put in your contact information and then it shows the specific times that that person who sent you the link has available so you can quickly schedule in a meeting right into their calendar. The last tool that I want to talk about is the Arc browser. I don't know if you have the same social feed algorithm as I do, but I do look at a lot of like marketing, software, and UI UX related content and the art browser was all over all of my platforms for a while. The art browser is a browser system much like Chrome, much like Safari or Firefox, but it's very, very tech driven. It's actually built on top of Chromium. They took Chrome essentially and built an entire UI over the capabilities of Chrome. Again, insane shortcuts and command center uses. Now I'm actually able to use my keyboard to clear cache, to search, and recently they added Arc Max, which actually has AI capabilities built in, so I can just quickly type to ask something to ChatGPT, to summarize an entire page in five sentences. I can also ask a question on any page to Arc's AI, and it'll answer that question right away. Like I said, it is a very tech forward browser and for me personally it is absolutely everything that I could have wanted in a browser. It also has really really great organization options so you're actually able to set up multiple profiles much like you are able to do with Chrome but the way that they allow you to switch between the profiles and the way that they allow you to customize the profiles I personally prefer a lot more. They even have this amazing split screen capability where you can actually within your art browser put two tabs together and have them side by side. And then you're easily able to resize each side and just have your data side by side for when you are writing something and need to do research or you're scheduling something and you need to see an email. There are countless ways that this feature is useful to me in my day-to-day -day job and I use it pretty much every day. I would say that tools like R, Cron, and Spark probably aren't tools that everybody would need. But if you're somebody who works in the digital field, if you're somebody who is constantly on your computer, and somebody who is generally kind of a power user for most apps and devices, then I think that these apps will bring a lot of value in your workflow on your device, as they have done for me. But that's it. I hope I was able to introduce some new apps for you to try out. Again, I think that not everybody needs every single app that I talked about in this 
this video but there is literally no harm in trying it out so i encourage you to go into the description box and click the links of all these different apps and just figure out if it's something that might be useful to you if you do end up trying any of these apps make sure to leave a comment and let me know so that we can talk about it if you enjoyed this video it would help me a ton if you gave it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button i hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and i will see you in my next video